I am Eof, Eof the swineherd, Eof the favoured one. Was it not I, tending my pigs on that wooded hillside, that was the first to see, the first to run with the news, the first to carry the word, the word that was to bring the bishop, Edwin of Worcester, to that self-same place where he also saw for himself what I had seen. What we saw then brought about such change in this vale that it would never be the same again. And welcome to Evesham and the Golden Vale. Today we are in the beautiful market garden town of Evesham, whose history dates back to the Bronze Age. On our journey through the Vale, we will explore the history of the town's Abbey Church, which in its day was amongst the finest in Britain. We will look at the famous Battle of Evesham and the dramatic death of Simon de Montfort, move forwards in time through the Victorian era to modern day Evesham and the 21st century. So now, let's take a look at what's in store on our historic journey. We begin our day here at the Almonry Heritage Centre where we have a team made up of members of the Vale of Evesham Tourism Association and we've enlisted their help and we have set them quite a challenge. Now they have got just eight hours to put together the event section of Evesham and the Golden Vale. So guys, can you tell me exactly what it is you have got to do? We've been photographing and filming all sorts of events both in the town and the villages. A lot of them are river based of course, we've got our um, river festival. Uh, John Smith's angling competition, but we've had um, things like the asparagus auction which is held in the village of Bradford and we're hoping we can get all this together um, ready for the video. Wonderful, well it all sounds very exciting, well all the best, you've got eight hours, we'll come back to you throughout the day, see you later on, good luck. So now we turn our attention to Evesham's past and begin our journey with the founding of its fine abbey. Legend has it that in the 8th century, a young swineherd called Eves was tending his pigs on a wooded hillside when he saw a vision of the Virgin Mary. Word spread to Edwin, Bishop of Worcester, who came and visited the area and saw the vision for himself. Edwin decreed that a church be built on the site and the town eventually became known as Eve's Hom. Hom in Saxon language signifies a river island on high ground. The Abbey Church of Evesham was built and dedicated to the Virgin Mary and by the 11th century it had become a major Benedictine foundation. Development of the Abbey continued until the 14th century until in 1540 as part of Henry VIII's dissolution of the monasteries the Abbey was sold dismantled and used as a quarry. All Saints Church and St Lawrence's Church remained. The Cloister Arch was built between approximately 1298 and 1318. This beautifully carved archway led into the Chapter House, a spectacular room with ten high-sided walls and no central pillar. In its day, it really was quite unique as it was the largest single arch building in the whole of Europe. The chapter house had a dual function, as well as being used by the monks for monastery issues and religious issues. It was also used daily by the monks to hear a chapter read from Benedictine rule.
Sadly, the arch is all that remains of this fine building today. St Lawrence's Church was situated near the Abbey Church. The monks built it so those citizens living in the west of Evesham could worship there. After the dissolution in 1540, St Lawrence's Church faced financial difficulties. Its parishioners were fewer and poorer than of all saints. In the 15th and 19th centuries, many unsuccessful attempts at restoration were made. In January 1978, the parish was united with that of all saints, as it was too costly to maintain independently. It was finally taken over by the Redundant Churches Fund, which is now the Church's Preservation Trust. St Lawrence's is open every day and a service is held annually on St Lawrence's Day. All Saints was built in the late 12th century for people living in the east of Evesham. In the 1870s, extensive restoration took place, which included the total rebuilding of the north side. After the closure of the church, St Lawrence's All Saints became the parish church of Evesham. Built by the north transept of the abbey, standing 110 feet high, overlooking the town is the bell tower an outstanding example of perpendicular architecture of the period and one of Evesham's most outstanding buildings. It was built by Abbot Clement Litchfield and completed between 1533 and 1539. Had the Abbey still been here, Evesham would have been a totally different place. However, we now turn to the events of the 4th of August 1265 and the famous Battle of Evesham, when for the first time local history touched national history. The battle marked the end of a power struggle between Henry III and his barons. In 1215, King John had made a number of promises in Magna Carta, but neither he nor Henry III kept them. The result of this was that Simon de Montfort and other barons took up arms against King Henry, who was captured at Lewis in 1264. The following year, the king was taken with de Montfort's army to Evesham, where Simon hoped to meet up with his son, Simon Jr., a meeting that the royalist army sought to prevent. We begin our story on August the 2nd, 1265, when de Montfort led his men across the river at Kempsey in Worcester. With him went King Henry, his captive from the Battle of Lewis. They crossed the River Avon at Pershaw, before marching on to Evesham Abbey. Simon's barber, Nicholas, sighted from the Abbey Tower what he assumed to be de Montfort banners in the distance. Thinking he would meet his son, Simon set off for Green Hill and discovered, too late, that the soldiers were, in fact, the Royalist Army, led by Edward, who had defeated Simon Jr. at Kenilworth and stolen his banners in an attempt to deceive the Earl. A raging battle ensued between the King's men and the Montfortians. Eventually, Simon's army was outnumbered, and he was forced to dismount. Simon continued to fight on foot, a broadsword in his hand before being stabbed from behind and killed. His body was left badly mutilated on the battlefield with other dead and wounded men. His friends later removed his body and carried him into the abbey, where he was interred near the high altar. Many Montfortians died that day. Those who tried to escape were pursued to their death, even in the abbey precinct. The dead and wounded lay everywhere, and the abbey was pillaged by the victors. The events of that day, August the 4th, 1265, prompted one of Evesham's chroniclers to write, Such was the murder at Evesham, battle, it was none. Following the death of Simon, a spring was found near the site, and this became known as the Battle Well. It became a place of pilgrimage, and many miracles of healing were claimed here in the name of Simon. However, the government took measures to suppress these stories 
and eventually popular interest faded. Evesham has been built around the meandering course of the River Avon. This unique location was the centre for many cottage industries, from nail making workshops to rope making workshops, basket weavers and of course the intensive cultivation of fruit and vegetables. By 1835 the town had a well established chartered borough council. Many local people were employed on the land of the market garden town of Evesham. People came from far and wide to buy the produce for which Evesham is so famous. The markets were always busy. Working on the land was by no means an easy life, but extremely hard work in all weathers. There were very few machines on the farms to do the work of a man. It would take many hours to plough a field by heavy horse, made harder by miserable inclement weather and during the darker days of winter. It wasn't unusual to find an entire neighbourhood employed on the land. Everybody had a role to play, whether as a milkmaid, stable boy or fruit and vegetable pickers. Work was constant, there was more than plenty to do. And so much so that holidays were unheard of. The only day the workers were granted was Christmas Day and just possibly one or two other Christian festivals. Market day was make or break time for all the hard work that had gone into farming the land. People would have breakfast at 5am, start work at 6am preparing the produce for market, which always started on time, 10 o'clock, Monday morning. It all happened very fast. You placed your goods down and the auction started right away. It wasn't long before everything was sold. On a good day, people would break for lunch at around 12 o'clock. Sometimes folk would bring their sandwiches along with them, wrapped up in a white recycled sheet. After a morning in the town, it was back to work on the land in all weathers. If you were lucky and it started to rain heavily, you got shed money, known locally as shud money, which today is called holiday pay. Major landowners lived in the town and managed vast amounts of acres within the Vale. In the latter half of the century, disputes were frequent between growers and buyers as to what the local measure known as a pot really was, because it varied from village to village. Eventually, a local grower named Harvey Hunt solved the dispute. He was the first to organise the fruit and vegetable auction in Evesham, which led to a set price of produce becoming universally accepted. until 1850 that the steam engine played an important role in the success of the market garden town of Evesham. The Great Western Railway and Midland Railway distributed consignments from Evesham late in the day to arrive the very next day in places like Birmingham. Despite the increased ease of travel, Evesham remained a close-knit community. Everyone knew everybody and what line of business they were in. However, the development of the railways did begin to attract a great many visitors to the area, all arriving in this beautiful market garden town to breathe in the healthy atmosphere and to soak up the spectacular scenery of the surrounding countryside. There is no doubt that during the Victorian age, the people of Evesham enjoyed a very good standard of living and owed much to its enlightened town council, its squire and its hard-working businessmen. Whenever folk speak of the Garden of England, there are those who would claim it for Kent. But we of the Vale discount such a tale. Tis this Eden we find heaven sent. Was it not here that the Virgin herself laid claim to the rich river soil? A bell tower stands where an abbey once stood, brought to ruin by rancour and greed. No longer there found the plain song sound, but still times of harvest and seed. Thus some there are say, in this very day, some one of the county of Kent, I was brought to this place 
And now, by God's grace, I believe Evesham's veil, heaven sent. Evesham has witnessed many historic events over the years, far too many for us to mention during our time today. However, one such event we must mention is the royal wedding of Princess Louise of Orléans to Prince Charles of Bourbon in 1907, one of the finest royal gatherings of its time. Once owners of Wood Norton, the Orléans family were famous for entertaining their Bourbon relatives and various family members who included the royal families of several European countries. It is said that some of the visits were kept secret for political and private reasons, but many were made public knowledge and were of great interest to the country. In 1904, the Duke d'Orléans received his sister, Queen marie Emily louise and her husband, King Carlos of Portugal. Their stay is reported as quick and short. King Carlos spent much of his time shooting on the estate with the Duke d'Orléans and other guests. The finest gathering of royalty at Wood Norton took place in November 1907 on the occasion of the marriage of Princess Louise of Orléans, the younger sister of the Duke d'Orléans, to Prince Charles of Bourbon. Many royal guests were invited, including King Alfonso of Spain, Queen Amelia of Portugal and the Grand Duke and Duchess Vladimir of Russia. Princess Henry of Battenberg represented the English royal family and many other royals were at the wedding. The Duke d'Orléans had a large wooden chapel built for the wedding. However, it was discovered that the chapel had not been licensed for the wedding, so instead it took place in a little corrugated iron hut in Avon Street, Evesham, which served as the Roman Catholic Church of St Mary's. 1924 witnessed the wedding of Squire Rudge of Evesham. And in 1928, the more light-hearted public baby show in Abbey Park. The park. Mm -hmm. I'll put that in at 30 seconds. So now, from nostalgic pictures of our past, we move on to the present day with a look at some of the most beautiful and idyllic villages in the country. Overlooking the Vale of Evesham is the Cotswold outcrop of Breeden Hill, with its stunning views and ring of delightful villages, Ashton, Beckford, Overbury, Kemerton, Breeden, Eckington and the Combatons. One of the prettiest is Elmley Castle, with its charming main street and church. Overlooked from the hill by the site of the castle, built in the 11th century by Robert Dabuton. Winding country lanes lead us away from the hill towards the ever-present River Avon and Cropthorne, where this lovely village of half-timbered houses and delightful gardens cluster around the court and the manor. The church dates from 1100, with late traditions, and the churchyard contains rare carved monuments and a Saxon cross. Crossing the Avon near Charlton over the Jubilee Bridge, we catch sight of the two mills at Fladbury, one at each end of the weir. One, however, is Cropthorne Mill, being just inside the parish boundary. This often painted mill is now a holiday residence, whilst Fladbury Mill, which used to generate electricity for the village, is now a private house. The church is mainly 12th to 14th century and contains wonderful brasses and stained glass depicting local historical events and family histories. The river is used by a thriving canoe club and winds past the local golf club whilst many boats pass through the lock each year on their way to Evesham. To the north lie a closely linked group of villages called the Lenches, from the Saxon word chlenk, meaning high, flat ground. 
the lords of the manor would add their name to the village, thus forming Rouse Lench, Church Lench, Atch Lench and Ab Lench. As these villages stand on higher ground, they became important plum growing areas, with many orchards still surviving to provide views for the famous Blossom Trail. Today the Lenches retain a secretive feel, as well as half timbered cottages, fine churches, and the superb Rouse Lench Court. Heading eastward around Evesham, we recross the Avon and its lush floodplains to the village of Offenham, centre of one of the main market gardening areas of the Vale. Greenhouses, flowers and salad crops surround this ancient village which was once the main Worcester to London road when the river was fordable here. Today, a picturesque main street leads to a maypole which is still used for traditional events. From the plain rise Cleve Hill and Bennett's Hill, giving lovely views over this part of the Vale and the river. Cleve Prior and the Littletons stand on this higher ground amidst agricultural land once owned by the Abbey. The Tithe Barn at Middle Littleton was once the Abbey's great barn and is now preserved for us all by the National Trust. We wind our way to the thriving village of Bretherton, picturesque and clustered around its square and church. The manor has been recently restored and along with the neo-Gothic hall and renowned theatre barn at the Grange forms a varied and interesting village. The Fleece pub has remained unchanged since the 18th century. Now owned by the National Trust, it holds an annual beer festival and asparagus auction. 11, 11, 11, 50, 11, 50, 11, 50, 11, 50, 11, 50, 11, 50, once, twice, sold. Do you want me to do a single round or double round? Thank you. I'm going to have to wait. Between here and Evesham lies Badsey, a large village built around a central church and green. There are many large houses of varying age providing an interesting profile of the village's development. The church still holds an eight peal of bells and the local blacksmith still plies his trade at the smithy. This once intensive area of cultivation leads us past the beautiful manor into Wickenford. Here, the tiny church dates from the 13th century and contains many wonderful carvings, including a magnificent monument to the Sandys family and a medieval three-decker pulpit. Behind the altar rails is a memorial stone to Penelope Washington, whose grandfather was brother to George Washington's great-grandfather. Here is to be seen the arms of the Washington family, which is said to be the prototype of the Stars and Stripes of the United States of America. The beautiful manor nearby has a wonderful wealth of history, first mentioned in the Doomsday Book of 1086. It was a grange for the Abbot of Evesham, whose monks built the lake and dovecot in the 12th century. As we head towards the Cotswolds, we come across the picturesque village of Broadway, with its famous high street and honey-coloured houses. The village is overlooked by Broadway Tower, which stands at the top of Fish Hill. Built on an ancient beacon site, the tower has had a colourful history. It was once a country retreat for pre-Raphaelite arts, notably the artist, designer, writer and craftsman William Morris. Today the tower houses exhibitions presenting its unusual past. Set in a beautiful country park, the views from the tower are breathtaking. Well, plenty there to whet your appetite, bringing us to the end of our journey through time, back to Evesham in the present day. Fortunately, many of the old half-timbered buildings and the fascinating history have been preserved by the National Heritage Trust and many local groups for us all to admire and enjoy.
With Stratford-upon-Avon, Cheltenham, Broadway and the Cotswold Hills within a very short distance, Evesham is an ideal centre for tourism. The riverside town caters to all needs. There is so much to do and see, whether relaxing in green meadows, drinking tea in quaint side alleys or a romantic row down the lovely River Avon. I can promise you the local people will go out of their way to ensure your time in Evesham is both enjoyable and relaxing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Vine Street led past the Abbey Gateway into Murstow Green. Murstow Green was sometimes used as a campsite for visitors to the Abbey. Originally called Swine Street, the Victorians renamed it to Vine Street. The Muse was built to replace an old house. It became a grain merchant granary and stables. These were converted into the shops which you see here today. The vine referred to the grapes grown on the terrace slopes of Hampton, near to Evesham's Chained Ferry, one of the few of its kind in England. Until 1981, asparagus grew in the fields around the news. However, today, the fields are now the town's car park. This amazing roundhouse in the Market Square dates from around 1450. And another notable building is the Town Hall to the right here from around 1586, possibly made with stone from the Abbey. In fact, it is believed that many of the old buildings in and around Evesham are made with the Abbey stone. The town is an ideal place for all the family and is worth a visit no matter what time of year you come. There is always some enlightening cultural ritual going on in the Vale. But if you're like me and just want to relax, sit back and watch the world go by, why not take a leisurely meandering boat trip down the River Avon? Cheers. <laughs> with some of the most beautiful countryside in Britain and without doubt some of the finest architecture, it's hardly surprising that thousands of people of all ages visit Evesham and its surrounding villages every year. Well, we're coming to the end of our time here in Evesham. I do hope this journey will inspire you to want to come and visit the area and experience its delights for yourself. Any information you would like regarding where to stay and what to see is available from the Almonry Heritage Museum and the Tourist Information Centre. The number is on your screen now. <laughs> Well, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to relax in a lovely old Cotswold pub. But before I can think about doing that, we need to go back to the museum and find out how our team has fared. I'll put that in at 30 seconds. Hello team, the moment of truth. I'm back to see how you've got on, but before you tell me, I'll just recap. So as you know, we asked the team here to compile the events section of Evesham and the Golden Vale. They had just eight hours. So now Tony, the moment of truth, how did you get on? Well, there's been a lot of sweat and toil, hasn't you, there, you, you look tired. We did it, but I'm glad to say we're there. Just. Well done. So just in the nick of time, you've managed to complete we it. Are. That's fantastic. Thank you very much. Well, that really is all we have time for today on our journey through Evesham and the Golden Vale. I do hope you have enjoyed the journey as much as I have. I know that I'll be returning to Evesham soon, very soon, I hope. For now, I'll leave you with a look at our team's compilation, the Vale's most exciting events of the year. Bye-bye for now. Well done again. Yeah. <laughs> time for a cup of tea. Mm -hmm. I'll put that in at 30 seconds. <laughs>
event's about bringing the whole family out for the day to actually come and watch top class internationals and qualifying anglers, fisher competition. Well, you've got the fair, you've got trade stands, you've got everything here for the family. After 22 years, they keep coming, so it must be a wonderful day out for them. I've been fishing since I was 10. Um, I've been coming to the John Smith Sint for the last nine years. Um, I started fishing for Barnsley about 10 years ago, and that really progresses me. But um, it doesn't matter how good you are, this, this, this is the weekend. Short of winning the World Championship, this is the event every match angler in the country wants to win. The band is based in Eversham. They're called the Avonbank Eversham Brass Band. Um, they play regular concerts here. Uh, the council uh, employs them quite, quite, quite regularly uh, to do concerts in this particular park here. We play uh, classical, popular marches, uh, anything uh, from film music, everything. This year we have about 70 boats, some years we've had 120 boats. The average is usually around 90, 80 to 90 boats. They all dress up, uh, some in theme and some in what we call the best dressed category where there's just bunting and flags and balloons or narrow boats. We have best traditional narrow boats, um, which is the, the castles and roses and the baskets of flowers. We have one narrow boat here that um, I think was first registered in 1900 on the canals and is wooden construction and is the only one of its kind. He travels around to lots of rallies and we're delighted to have him at ours. And then in the evening we go for a big illuminated parade where we get all the boats lit up with fairy lights and they cruise up and down the river and they make a spectacular sight. Every year, in the week of the 4th of August, the Simon de Montfort banner flies from Evesham Public Hall to commemorate the Battle of Evesham. And the Simon de Montfort Society lay a wreath here on this monument in Abbey Park in remembrance of Simon de Montfort and his men killed in that battle in 1265. The monument marks the spot of the original burial of Simon near the high altar by the monks of Evesham. We welcome all interested in Evesham's medieval history and Simon de Montfort to join us. The event has been very successful. The weather's been very good to us over the last two days. Uh, last Monday there was a cloudburst uh, over Evesham and the surrounding area and the river rose quite high so we were a little worried but it's been fine ever since and we've had two days excellent racing in the sunshine. Crews have entered from throughout the country. We've had uh, crews from Devon and Lancashire uh, lots in the London area and of course we've had lots of support from local uh, clubs Worcester and Gloucester and Shelton. We've had lots and lots of members put in lots and lots of work to help us and it's made it a really successful uh, bank holiday weekend, same as every year. <laughs> Right, can you see where we are next cruise down?